Hello everyone and good day to you. This is Roger and I hope that you're doing awesome and having a great summer and welcome back to our ongoing series of how to set up and play the Avalon Adventure Board Game and Dungeon Crusade. I'm very happy to be here with you and I'm glad you're back. And like I said, this is Roger with Grubus Games Unlimited, creator of the Avalon Adventure Board Game and Dungeon Crusade. And again, I greatly welcome you. It's great to be back here. So, hey, we're going to be wrapping up this series just for right now. We're going to be coming back with more stuff. As I've said, we're going to be moving into a few exciting announcements now that we're wrapping this up. So you have that to look forward to. And um, just welcome. I just hope everyone's doing great. So it's just great to be back here. All right, so what are we going to do today? We're going to go over Cella celebration day and you guys if you followed the series you probably already know a lot about this already um just in a nutshell though this is when the heroes complete the you know our level one heroes were working on quest table one once those quests are completed um they're going to go back to the village for celebration day so that's what we're going to discuss uh we're going to talk about the teleport track i think we talked about that much earlier but we'll go over that again and then after that, I want to touch on a few things that were kind of like on the side, but I, I want you to know about them. We're going to talk about underworld artifacts, um, a little bit about the loot, and just a couple other things and like a final discussion to wrap this up, okay? So without further ado, let us discuss Celebration Day. And if you've followed the series, this will be very familiar to you. Even if you haven't, this is quite easy. Um, here is our level one quest table, and here is level two quest table, and level three. But notice here, there's like this presence here in the middle of these tables, and that means celebration day, okay? So as you know, we started out with our level one heroes, and they were working on that side quest of the Chambers of, Cor of the Corrupt. Um, they completed that. We flip the token over. Once that's completed, that's a closed book. It's cleared. The quest is cleared. Um, the main quest, they were looking for that Onyx key up in the spider lair for Baron Whitmore. And then they had to get the key to go into the Ancient Depths Quadrant and search for his sparkling Cherry Jubilee wine. They found those bottles that quest was completed, cleared. And then remember, we had one guardian spawn. So we're going to say that that one guardian was killed. That's for the kill the guardians quest. And that is completed. So once those books or quests are completed, notice our Elder Globe token is glowing red. That means that there was evil in the dungeon. For the time being, the quests are done. They've killed the monsters. Now there is purity in the dungeon. So the reverse side is the green elder globe. So what we're going to do now is the heroes are going to head to celebration day up there in the village. Um, let's discuss the teleport track. I think we went over this, but let's just go over it again since, you know, we're going into celebration day. And here is our teleport track. And now that our quests are complete, the minute that that Elder Globe, right here, look at it again, once that glows green from, of course, completing those three quests, you're immediately going to take a red tracking token and put it on the three of the teleport track. And what these numbers mean is that's how many turns the heroes have left before they are teleported to the village for celebration day. So if, you know, let's say that they want to do some mining um, in the dungeon. If they want to open some treasure chests, maybe they want to go into one of those um, chambers with a monster that spawned during the seeding process, so on and so forth. So this gives them a few less turns to finish up any unfinished business. So when you put this on there, and since we learned about the what comprises a turn, at the start of the next turn in the upkeep phase, you're going to move this down to two. There's two turns left, right? So you're going to go through all that. You're going to go through upkeep, encounter, phase, guardian phase, hero phase, monster phase, back to the top of a turn at the upkeep. You're going to move it down. Just like I said again, finally, when this hits teleport, boom, that's it. All of the heroes are teleported up to the into the village for celebration day. It's as simple as that.
So let's um, get our heroes and head to the village for celebration day. Okay, everyone, and we are in the village for celebration day. You can just hear the festive music playing, can't you? Listen, how awesome is that? <laughs> so, hey, what we're gonna do is we're over here in celebration day, and this is very, very well laid out here in our quick reference guide. And I'm basically just gonna go down this and read a few things for you and point some things out. Um, looking right here at entry one, first thing you're gonna do, draw one celebration day gift card and read and process the card and then shuffle it back into the deck. Okay, so our, our celebration day gifts right here. And actually I was just talking to Ruben and Rob and Jason and who else? There's a few other people in our kind of Dungeon Crusaders group that in the expansion, there is going to be some awesome new celebration day gifts that the villagers um, give the heroes. So, I, actually I forgot to tell you. So, you know, since the heroes did a great job, the villagers have gotten together to give them a gift on celebration day. And, you know, there's some cool stuff in here, but in the expansion, there's gonna be a ton of very unique things that they're going to give the heroes. So we uh, basically, you just shuffle it, and we're gonna shuffle, and we're just gonna grab one. And the villagers have given the heroes, oh, this is a nice one right here. They're being very generous tonight. <laughs> villagers have gathered together to give the heroes one legendary piece of loot. So um, basically, you go through, um, start churning over cards in the loot deck, and you're gonna take the first legendary piece of gear you find. So that's that's a celebration day gift. That's a that's a very good one right there. Um, so that's how that works. Okay, we're going to look at entry two and three here, um, and this is very simple again. Collect rewards from completed tavern task, and then uh, return the card to the game box. So remember our tavern task. And remember, you can turn this in on any celebration day. It doesn't have to be this one, or it could be the second one. So if you have a tavern task, basically turn it in and you can get your reward, or the hero's reward, rather. Um, and again, at the bottom here it says, and there's no penalty for not completing a tavern task. So I think I have our tavern task right here. And remember, we were on this one, the treasure hunters for Simon Ashbourne for his wife, who collects antiquities around Avalon. So, you know, if you don't complete these, there's, it's just optional. It's, you know, it'll get you more life force and some other kind of reward. So you can churn those in on celebration day. Also down here, you're gonna churn in your quests. If Albus didn't, you know, turn in the quest or had him run it back, you can churn those in now and collect any kind of like physical reward, maybe a piece of loot, gold, um, things like that. So two and three there, that's what that is. Okay, our next entry here is, let me get this into focus, right there at the very top. And this is a very cool one. Draw one D6 plus five loot cards and restock the blacksmith shop with the drawn cards. So what that is is, um, I always call it the, the blacksmith has new stock available. And that deck is right up here. And um, we're gonna point something out with this. Um, it says shuffle junk loot and actually underworld artifacts back into the deck and then draw new cards if either of these cards are drawn. So remember junk loot. Um, so if when we pull this, we're going to do this right now, but if we pull junk loot or an underworld artifact, we're going to be chatting about those in a moment. You simply put those back and redraw. So let's go ahead and do this. The blacksmith has new stock available. We're going to roll the D6. We're going to add five to that as I crash all of the elixirs. So that's five plus four, that's nine cards. So right here, we'll see, let's, let's get them all. One, two, three, four. Okay, there's the five. And then with the roll, the D6, one, two, three, and four. So we'll go over some of these real quick with you. There's a legendary right there. There's Nightbane Dagger. That's a legendary piece. Very nice. 
So we're going to put this, of course, in his shop right over here in Legendary. Um, what's that? Mace of the Crusader. That's an epic piece of gear. Put that over here. Here's a fabled gear. And I think we touched on this. Um, fabled gear, when I wrote the story for Dungeon Crusades, I think we chatted about this, but I created all these characters for the story. So when you find fabled gear, notice there's like these gold accents, the names in gold, the crystal here is surrounded in gold. These are very powerful, but they have a high gold cost and they belonged to the characters in the story of Dungeon Crusade. So Mallory is um, Emperor Sylvian's uh, daughter and his wife, Ashara. So that would go, of course, in the common, but it's fabled gear. Another piece of um, fabled gear, Ren's Warbow. And Ren is a famous hero in Avalon. And there's actually a location in Avalon named um, Ren's Crossing where a big battle took place um, some years ago. So there's that goes into our rare. Full Helm, that's common. And then we have the Obsidian Ring, another piece of common gear. Okay, and then here we go. Uh, ugly Old Hat. This is a piece of junk loot. So this would go back into the deck, and we're just going to draw one right here. Oh, there's something oh, nice. Helm of the Destroyer. That's good for your chaos. And remember, there's that square socket I was talking about. So remember the Gem of Enrichment that you could craft? That would go perfectly in that helmet. That's a piece of rare gear. I hope you're enjoying all this. I love going through all the loot in the game and sharing this with you. Forester Axe, Socket, it's a piece of common gear. And then uh, finally, Ring of the Magi. And this would be good for like Zeke or someone. And you see there's some bonus effects to that. Plus two towards arcane and ranged affliction checks. And you could add plus three to arcane uh, warfare rolls. Cost is 600 gold. So we'll put that there. So that's kind of, we just restocked the blacksmith shop and that's new stuff that your heroes can go through, of course, and shop and possibly pick up. Okay, the next thing um, that you do is restock our bazaar here. Remember, um, we set some of those over here to the side, like some of the potions and the torches that you used. So you can think of it, as the bazaar, the people, the villagers who work at the bazaar created more of these for the heroes to purchase. So we're gonna take all these, remember these were all used, we set aside, and you're just gonna simply put these back into the bazaar. And we'll put our elixir potions here. And that's how that works. And so those few things you just saw, those are kind of the things you just do first in that order. And it just makes sense to process those first. Because now notice in our quick reference guide right here, it reads, during celebration day, the heroes are free to conduct as much business as they like. So after you do those few things that we just did. We want to get those out of the way. Now they can just, um, you know, go, walk through the village and do what they want. So picture this like um, the pause button is on, like in a video game or something. You know, there's no timer. There's nothing like that. You can take as long as you want and do as much as you want in the village. Okay, I think right now a good thing to do is let's talk about how to level up your heroes. And we grabbed our rogue here, Paloom, she's of course level one. And quite simply, it's this. Remember our life force? It costs four life force to level up a hero. So um, during you know our quest and killing monsters we got from our collective pool of life force, here is four life force. So we're gonna cash this in. And you have to make note, and this is a, an, a, another important rule here that where her health and essence are because in dungeon crusade they don't as soon as they level up to the next level they don't automatically gain full health and full essence okay so we can see it's on what is that nine and nine so nine and nine so we're going to take our card clips off 
Oh, and I think I, I pointed this out. On the back of every level one, you can read about the heroes, um, their backstory. So every hero has a backstory. I think we touched on that. So we're going to trade in her level one card. And here is her level two hero card. And of course, in the back is level three. And please understand that you can't level up past the quest table you're working on. So, of course, when the heroes leave Celebration Day and they go back into the dungeon, they're, of course, going to be working on quest table two, so they can be level two. But like I said, there's a few special events in the game hidden somewhere, and there's a chance where a hero can level up to the next level, but it's only under those circumstances if you can find these secret little things in the game where that happens. So we're going to put the markers on nine where it was before here and right here and Paloom now is a level two hero and that's how leveling up works. Also, I think it's a good time to talk about special abilities and how they, um, and how a hero has to acquire them. Okay, so Paloom is of course level two. So since we're in the village, um, we're down here. Here's the academy that has our special abilities. So let's get um, Paloom's special abilities here, and we're just going to replace the level three versions, of course, because we can't um, obtain those yet. Remember, a hero must be that level to obtain that special ability. So what she can do is she um, she has the two level, because remember there's only two special abilities per game. Um, she hasn't acquire, acquired any of the level one abilities yet. So we have Garut and Shadow Dagger. So in Dungeon Crusade, you can't just jump to level two. They have to be done in succession. So she could pay the um, life force cost and she could either get the level one um, Garrote or the Shadow Dagger. So let's say Shadow Dagger is a very good one, actually. So let's say that she did that. Okay, she paid the life force, which I think is three. Um, oh, no, it's actually only two. Okay, so she would pay the two life force. She would get that. Then let's say that she had more life force she wanted to spend. Okay, at that time, she can get the level two version of Shadow Dagger. And these can be used like that. So let's say that you know, you're back at, she's back in the dungeon. She could use this level one ability. And of course, this is gonna have to be channeled because it has a red arrow, but then she could turn around and just cast this other one, more powerful one. So you could use both of them like that. So that's how it is with special abilities. They have to be um, acquired in succession, you know, one, two, and three. Okay, we should probably go over some of the services in the dungeon here. And again, this in the quick reference guide, this is so well laid, so well laid out. You can just go right down and just see everything. But um, first of all, when your heroes need to, I, I know we discussed this before in an earlier video, but up here, here is the tavern. So if your heroes are low on essence, you can spend 100 gold and they kind of sleep at the tavern and they regain you know, their essence. So a kind of a good tip or a strategy is don't buy your Ocher juice potions because that restores essence. Always use the tavern. And then when you leave to go to the dungeon, and this is for the other things we're going to chat about, then I would buy, you know, your other potions and all that. So use the village's services to, you know, restore your essence, health, get rid of afflictions. And then when you're about to leave for your, you know, second delve or third delve into the dungeon, go ahead and pick up the various consumables at the bazaar. Okay, we're over here at the temple now. So I know we went over this before, but let's go over this um, once again now that we're in celebration day. So if your heroes need to recover some health, here is the healing fountain right here. So if they pay 100 gold, they can restore, it gives them all their health back. So you could use that service here. And then up here is for 100 gold, if they have any afflictions, um, the temple will remove all afflictions for 100 gold. 
And then finally, the blessing. Remember, we discussed the blessing deck, so we're gonna go over this quickly. When you pay 200 gold, a hero can buy one blessing. And let me grab one here. I'll grab a few of them here. When you purchase, when a hero purchases a blessing, you don't reveal this right now. You, so let's say Paloom had bought this for 200 gold. You keep it face down and place it in her player, player area. Just like if, you know, if another hero bought a blessing, this is not revealed at this time. As soon as they return to the dungeon, they are permitted to reveal the blessing or if they received a blessing. So we'll look at a few again right here. And there's different <laughs> sad sayings on these. But right here is despair. This basically means your prayers were not answered. So there's some sad lines here like moments of despondency now dampen your courageous spirit. Shuffle this card back into the blessing deck. So your prayers weren't here, heard and there's no blessing. However, if they're lucky, they'll have a beautiful angel to watch over them and aid them in some way. There's many, many different angels in the blessing deck. So this is the Angel of Swiftness, and this is a great one. Um, she will add plus three to a hero's base movement. And like I said before, blessings can never be traded between heroes. No other hero can gain the benefit of an angel. This angel is tied to that hero who got the blessing. And the only way to get a new blessing is if this hero discarded this angel, then they could acquire um, another blessing on celebration day. And no, Albus can't get a blessing and run it back. The hero must be in the village during celebration day or at the start of the game to receive a blessing. Okay, next up, and I know we discussed this before, but when the heroes, definitely when they level up, they are allowed to go through all of the different various um, loot and all the different rarities here. So just picture like this is a medieval shop and there's all these pieces of armor and weapons hanging on the wall. So they can sift through all of this and purchase um, new gear. And remember we talked about the tier on the loot cards and it's basically like this. Level one heroes can equip common gear. When your heroes level up to level two, they are permitted to get uncommon green gear and blue rare gear. When they hit level three, they're permitted to purchase and equip epic gear and legendary gear. So kind of like level one, level two, level three. That's how that works. And remember kind of way up here, it says on the blacksmith's um, banner here that you can sell bulks of the like moonstone, zoltanite and precious stones to the blacksmith. So if you're just looking to make, if you just need some quick gold and you have a lot of that, he will buy this from you. And of course you can send Albus back with that while your hero is in the dungeon to take care of this. And of course you can pay him to create those power gems like we saw in the other video to plug into their sockets and weapons. So that's another service there. And going back to the loot here, remember that the blacksmith will buy um, gear from the heroes. He'll, he will buy it back. Not for very much though. He's quite stingy. But um, in here I put a chart that you can refer to in your quick reference guide for what you can expect to get from the blacksmith for when you sell different gear. You can get a, a good amount sort of for fabled um, gear. So just consult this here and you can see what you can sell to the blacksmith and what he'll pay for it. And finally, in the village, here is the House of Chance, which we discussed before is a gambling hall um, where the heroes can enter in and play only one of four House of Chance games. So let me go a little in depth for you right here. And this is right here in the quick reference guide. So there are, every edition of Dungeon Crusade comes with the game Tower Attack. And we'll pull out these so you can see them. But every edition comes with Tower Attack. That's like the standard House of Chance game. So if you have the Knight of the Realm edition or the Crusader of the Realm edition, you're going to be playing Tower Attack 
each celebration day, and it's a fun like dice pushing game. However, for people who have the Master of the Realm edition, okay, that comes with Tower Attack, of course, but it also comes with Skull Jack. It's like a simple form of Blackjack, and it comes with Heroes versus Monsters. And then finally, it comes with the very awesome The Adventures of Bravely the Knight. So what you're going to do is you never use all four at the same time. That's a big no-no and a huge misconception. You never use all four. You're going to use your D4 and you're going to roll this. And you're going to randomly decide what one game shows up in the House of Chance. And again, this is for you Master of the Realm edition people. So you just simply roll... And then on, you'll notice on the boards, which we're going to take a look at, it will have the number corresponding to that result. That is the one game that shows up in the House of Chance. And check the description of this video. Some of these um, demos were um, from a little while back, but I, you know, I demoed each game so you can see how they're played. So go ahead and check those out, and I think you'll enjoy all these House of Chance games. But let me give you a quick glimpse at all four of these games real quick. And our first House of Chance game is Tower Attack. And this one is the one that comes standard in all editions. Um, it's a kind of like a dice pushing game where you're gonna use the green, purple, and orange D12. And you're gonna bet on these different lines here. So the hero has to go up like through the tower and defeat the evil skeleton army that took over the tower. Okay, now we're going to get into the three House of Chance games that come with the Master of the Realm edition. So here we have Heroes versus Monsters. And quickly going over the game, here's the Chapel of Light. The invading monsters start here. And there's a few different varieties here. There's a Grunt, Skeleton, um, a Wizard, and the Beast. And so they're moving across this dungeon and they're trying to invade the chapel of light meanwhile we have our archer our warrior and our mage who kind of can move out and of course try to defend it and kill the monsters and this uses an action point system and these two colored dice the heroes have some special abilities here and then you'll see there's a challenge deck here for level one where it's very easy there's only a few monsters that are you know, coming towards the Chapel of Light. And then, of course, as it goes up, more monsters are going to appear and more tougher monsters, so on and so forth. And level seven and eight are quite tough when the beast um, monsters start making their way across. So this is a little bit of um, heroes versus monsters. And real quick, I forgot to show in Tower Attack. Like right here, you'll see that number when you roll the D4 of what game will be selected. Okay, next up we have our other House of Chance game, Skulljack, where up to three heroes can play. You know, you can play either just one, two, or three. Um, you got to be careful with this game because they can lose big or they can win big, you know, the more heroes that play. And they're going up, up against the evil dealer, Skulljack. Um, That's a, a very simple form of Blackjack. And the nice thing is with this, you get a custom deck of Skulljack playing cards, you know, like really good quality playing cards. And again, this is with the Master of the Realm edition, you get Skulljack. And finally, our last House of Chance game. And I must tell you, I loved designing all of them, but this one right here is my favorite. This is The Adventures of Bravely the Knight. And my thought was dungeon crawl board game and an arcade game, but mixed in this medieval theme. So right here is almost like the front of like where you would put a quarter in an arcade machine. So what this is, is of course we have our retro spinner here to go around the board. Um, this is a death trap dungeon. And so you take control of Bravely here. Very cool miniature. And he has a little hero card here. And you have to go through here. And the heroes can, whatever gold Bravely finds within the dungeon, the heroes get to keep and spend in the game. 
kind of cool. And there's a lot of deadly things in this little dungeon right here. So this is the fourth House of Chance game, The Adventures of Bravely the Night. Do check out the demo for this. It was a, a really fun playthrough with this. Okay, and that pretty much summarizes Celebration Day. Okay, so when the heroes are done leveling up and getting any new special abilities and getting a blessing and buying some stuff from the blacksmith, it is time to make their second descent into the dungeon where, of course, the monsters are going to become more fierce, uh, more deadly. You're going to see new champions show up. So they're going to be working on quest table two. And closing out this before we discuss a few things I just wanted to touch base with you on. It lists right here everything on our quick reference guide. You're going to do a few things like you're going to create a new um, encounter deck um, before you head back to the dungeon and um, the minions that are if there's any minions in the dungeon, you know, from the previous delve, you're just going to remove them from the dungeon. So it's clear again. And it's it's just like it was you're going to be heading to quest table two to complete those quests. Then you're gonna come back for one final celebration day, do what we did here, and then make your final descent and try to clear the dungeon of the level three and level four monsters, which it gets fairly tough. So this is all laid out right here for you in the quick reference guide. And that's Dungeon Crusade. So I wanna go over a few things about underworld artifacts and resurrection um, with a hero. Um, that's a very cool system. So let's touch on that and then we'll wrap all this up. And we're going to zoom into the dungeon right here where we have Enwin, our archer, and this green elite orc siege breaker to demonstrate this. But right here in your quick reference guide, we're going to uh, discuss if a hero dies and the resurrection process. Okay, so here we are down in the dungeon and we can see Enwin, our archer hero, is combating this orc siege breaker, and that is an elite. So let's suppose that the orc siege breaker killed Enwin. First thing you're gonna do is take Enwin's hero card. I'm trying to fit into the camera here. And notice her health is here, so let's say that that orc siege breaker hit her for two damage. You're gonna put the clip onto the heart. Also, you're going to take the clip down here and she has lost all her essence. So when a hero perishes, they lose all of their essence. Another thing you're going to do is remove any kind of affliction that that hero was stricken with. So just take all these cards out of their player area if they have an affliction, one, two, three, or four of them, and just place them back with the other affliction cards. The next thing you're going to do is take the hero's cardboard miniature and place it in the resurrection altar on the village board. Next, you're going to move the terror track up by one. Anytime a hero perishes, the terror track will go up by one because consider the villagers see their heroes dying and that doesn't really sit well with them. Now, at the start of the next upkeep phase, this is gonna be the resurrection process. What you're going to do is take your white D3. This is going to represent health and essence restored to this hero. The red D12 represents health restored to this hero. And the orange D12 represents essence restored to this hero. So you're gonna roll these all at the same time, but I'll just go over each one. So we would roll this. Okay, so Enwin has recovered two health and two essence. It's hard to fit the hero card here, but I'm gonna mark this back here. And then we're gonna roll these two. That was very good. So also Enwin has recovered three additional health and 12 essence. So let me show you how to place the hero back into the dungeon. Okay, and before we get into this, I wanna just show you, fit it in here. So there's her five health. 
from the resurrection process. And even though she had, actually that would have been 14 essence, remember, a hero can never go past their maximum level. So she's just topped off there at nine with her essence. So she is fully resurrected. And what you do is, you can place the resurrected hero next to any hero, adjacent to any hero in the dungeon. Um, when I came up with this system, just think of it as each of the heroes have something called a soul stone. So they are permitted to be resurrected or teleported back into the dungeon next to one of their comrades. And that simply is the resurrection process.